organizing a successful breakfast meeting. I said, how dare me come here to come and say that I know how to organize a successful breakfast meeting and that I should not be filled with such pride. And so if I've come here to speak, it's uh, basically to share a few things from, from my experience and from my perspective. And ultimately, you would decide whether it, it will translate into organizing a successful breakfast meeting or not. And I'm going to come in. And so when I looked at the, the topic again, organizing a successful breakfast meeting, as I broke down the various components, I, I saw that one component stands up successful. And really, that is at the heart of what I've been asked to share, successful. And my understanding, my clear understanding of successful is that there must be a certain expectation or a certain purpose or a certain aim. And then there must be a certain output. And then when you look at the purpose and you look at the output, then you measure whether what you set yourself to do, you really achieved it. And then the word success can really come to you. Now, having joined through gospel, even when I joined East Lebanon and a crystal chapter, I'm not sure I have seen any particular document that says that when you do A, B, C, D, means you have organized a successful meeting or these parameters. I have not seen them specifically stated in this thing. However, I have come to understand that if I want to measure success, I can't go outside the contours of our vision and our mission. And that if I want to talk about a successful breakfast, the foundation would be our vision and our mission. And we know our vision, we know our mission. At the heart of it, the fundamental thing is to bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's fundamental, the vision. And then the mission, we do that. We also train and equip. We empower people. And we have the opportunity for fellowship. So if I'm organizing a breakfast meeting, and I say it's successful, my measurement are these indexes. So number one, I must be able to sell, tell myself that after the breakfast meeting, People gave their life to Christ. They were convicted by the Holy Spirit. After the breakfast meeting, those who were previously acquainted or in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, because of that breakfast meeting, though they had grown cold, they had come back to Him. Now, after a successful after a breakfast meeting, I must be able to see that people who were on the right path, who are on fire, after that breakfast meeting, their energies have been reinforced and they believe that this is the way to go. They must leave feeling that way. After a successful breakfast meeting, what I must be able to say is that people who came, their burdens were lifted because we say we don't only talk about Jesus Christ, we demonstrate Jesus Christ. So if they come in with a challenge, they must not leave that place with a challenge. So we must have feedback that says that I came, I was down, I was depressed. When I left, I felt the love of God. That must be my measurement. And so these are the things that guide for me personally. If I, whether I, I say, oh, this breakfast meeting was successful or not, it must be rooted in the vision and the mission. And therefore, in achieving this, there are certain practical things that you do, or that myself, my chapter, we do in achieving this, and we we'll measure ourselves. Now, so to categorize it, I would say pre-breakfast, the breakfast day itself, and post-breakfast, pre-breakfast, the breakfast day, and also post-breakfast. Now, the pre-breakfast seems to be the most crucial time. Because as we, we recognize, it is not a physical event. It's a spiritual event that manifests itself physically. And if you do not have that concept, that concept and understanding, then you will fall into what I call the traps. So that you will be enticed by numbers. You will be enticed by so-called big people attending it. You'll be enticed and so encouraged by the feedback that people say, oh, everything was organized nicely, but the key things are missing. And so the pre-breakfast is essential because 
It is at that time that you go into that time of prayer and fasting. So, for example, in my chapter, before we have the breakfast meeting, there's a period, minimum one week. So, if it's on Saturday, Friday, a Monday to Friday, we are fasting and praying. The whole chapter must be engaged, seriously and actively fasting and praying. And in the evening, there's a prayer time of about 30 minutes where we come. And then after we have fasted and prayed, we come in the evening and we round it up by prayer. Then we do it the next day. And then the next day. So for one week, we are going into that. But what I've discovered is that even before that one week, the, the leader of that chapter, the chapter president, the executive, they must be yielded. If you see the, chap the breakfast meeting as an event, then you have missed it from my personal opinion. It is in that journey of fulfilling that vision. So you yourself, and I talk personally from my experience, the times when I'm distracted by work or family or other things, it does not translate. But when I'm fully connected and yielded, that is when I see people after breakfast meeting, during the breakfast meeting, you see that there's that tangible transaction that has gone on between them and the Holy Spirit. So even before we start on Monday to Wednesday, it is about us, where we are in our journey with the Lord, whether we are yielded. Because it will ultimately translate into what is going to happen. Because it's all about the Holy Spirit. It's not about the gathering of men. It's a gathering of men so that the power of the Holy Spirit will become manifest and life will be transformed. And so the yielding is important. Then your preparation in terms of your spiritual awareness and being alive for that particular event. Is very important. So the prayer goes into praying for your role players. And then pray also the prayer to even select the role players. Very critical. Very, very critical. So if I'm even having a breakfast meeting in December 2023, we are praying towards who would come and speak for that season. And that the Holy Spirit must deliver the person. Because it is not the person coming to speak who will make the difference. It is the Holy Spirit at work in that person who makes the difference. Okay. So the pre also involves invitations. Again, invitations, because you, yes, it's a spiritual thing, but people must come. You must have a clear idea of how many people you want to have in that particular breakfast. There are certain breakfast meetings you say, I want 100 people. I want 150 people. I want 200 people for this purpose, for this category of people. You must look at that. And the invitation must be very deliberate. In our chapter, we have a situation where we say, okay, executive of the chapter, you have a certain requirement to have a minimum of three people, including yourself, come. So that if we are about 15, it means that a minimum, just among ourselves, we have a minimum of about 50 people we can account for, and we are going to pay for them. There are certain people you cannot invite by giving them ticket, ticketed invitation. That is, you have a prize thing on it. You have to have a special invitation for them because you don't want them to get a sense that we are coming in, uh, somebody has paid in, but no. You want them to come in because of the kind of people they are, that they should feel special, that you are organizing this thing for them. So the invitation is targeted. You get the people. And everyone in the chapter, as far as possible, must be part of it because it is their platform to witness. And that orientation must go on. That giving that opportunity to bring somebody in is what you have been called to do. And that if you bring somebody in, by all means, once it's properly organized, you get what you want. And so everybody, they must see it as a privilege that I am taking this um, card and I am inviting. And again, we cannot send these cards out until we have prayed over the cards. Because they are not ordinary cards. These invitation cards, they are life and death issues. Somebody's life depends on that invitation. Somebody's life depends on that invitation. So we pray over the invitation cards. Because life and death issues. And then we distribute them. Special invitation and prize invitation. Then we have the day itself. The day itself, you must be prepared. Having prepared yourself spiritually, you must 
The evidence of that spiritual operation is even your countenance. How you welcome people in. How you let somebody... So your whole idea is that if the person meets you, for example, as an usher, if the person meets you, the person must experience immediately Jesus Christ, even before they have a seat there. It's important. Then even before the breakfast meeting starts, you tell the worship team, you come early, saturate the atmosphere. The person must enter in the Holy Spirit already immediately. That person has an engagement, even before they sit down, even before you interact with them. And in terms of the sense that this must be done in a, the most excellent way you can do it, because it's not about yourself. Because you are doing this to win a soul, that I may do all things. I may make myself all things, that by all means, I may win a soul for Christ. So that is critical also. So three, I mean, during the breakfast itself, the excellence that you exhibit, the excellence that you show, the commitment, very critical. The idea also is that whoever comes there must know that indeed we are professionals and we are distinct from the church. They must know that as a lawyer, as a doctor, as an architect, as a plumber, we deal in our things in the most professional way. So that if they don't feel that church is for them, this place will be for them. And once they come in, then they will understand the importance of church. Once they come in, so that kind of excellence must, must be there. It's very, very critical. Then beyond the day itself, all the gathering of the information is most, most critical because I've come to understand that often we just want to have a breakfast meeting to check the box that we have done something in terms of we have organized something. The most important I have come to discover is after, which is most likely. Even the ability to call people and thank them sincerely for having taken precious time to come for your breakfast you realize that it's, it's missing. And when you do that, people appreciate it. And when you follow up, that is when you bring into your full membership. That you, this is when you bring into your full people who see the kind of seriousness you attach to what you do, how professional you are. And when they come in, then indeed, we are fulfilling that thing that says, call them, recruit them. Then the army then becomes a larger and larger and larger. So pre during and then post. These are some of the things we do where we are. Cannot, I cannot exhaust it, it's just to give a sense of what we do. Thank you for all.